Hey, what's going on? It's Avi. You know that awesome thumpy thing that everyone's doing these days? Honestly, I'm kind of a classic guitarist, right? The thumping, I always thought that was more of a bass Victor Wooten thing, but now it's kind of traveled over to, to, to guitar and I'm getting into it. One of my students brought to me this thumping exercise that uh, Tim Henson apparently learned from Tosin Abasi, I think, and let's go over it and analyze it a little bit and maybe this will help you understand exactly what Tim's doing here. So first, let's take a look at the part itself. I'm gonna put myself in the, uh, hey, wait, where am I? There I am, what's up? Okay, cool. <laughs> Okay, so I did look at this a little bit, but I do not have that down at all and nearly not at that speed either. Let's get the guitar up in here, right there. And maybe a little bit over there. Yeah, that's fine. The thumb thing, he does a great example uh, explanation in this video. So honestly, check out the video for like a, a good, really solid explanation. Essentially what we're doing with the thump is we're taking this part of our thumb right here and we're just thumping down, going down, just like that. And then the double thump is when you go back up as an upstroke with your nail. So just that. That's all that's happening there. So you can practice it the way he practices it here. It tells us in the videos to go. All right, so this is not still like, this is, I'm not proficient at this yet. So after the thump, we just do this really easy one, two, three with our fingers, first, second, third, just that. So that's it. That's all you gotta do. So thump, thump, then one, two, three, DGB. That's it. DGB strings. That's all we're doing there. So first we have this E minor, right? Minor third going on there, E to G. Then we have an open G here, so we have a unison. And then we have a third G actually here. So we really have root E and then three Gs. Two Gs are the same, and then one is up the octave. That's all we're doing here. But it's a really beautiful voicing, and it's really spread out as part of why it sounds the way it does. So the second time he does this, he goes down to the lower string, to the low E, to give us a big old octave jump. So it goes... Right? So that's how that sounds, just like that. From there, we actually go down to our pinky from here, and then we bring our third finger up to the B. So we go this. That. So for this chord, pinky goes down from the eighth fret to the seventh fret onto the F sharp. We have our middle finger coming up to the B on the E string here. Then everything else stays the, stays the same. That's it. So we're just, we have this, our third finger and our first finger stay the same. Pinky goes down, up, and third finger, uh, second finger goes up to the seven, just like that. And then the second time you do this, just like the other variation, you go from the F sharp here down to the B on the open string. So we have the... And then... Right? So that's what we got so far. Right? This is very much... Let's actually, let's analyze this a little bit, right? So we got, we got going on here. This sounds like some type of four chord, perhaps. Uh, yeah, four... We have a triad right here, right at the beginning here. It's an inverted triad, right? So we have a B, we have an E, then we have a G. This is, this is just another E minor chord. It's just an E minor chord, but with now with the B in the bass. So it's an E minor over B. But hold on a second. What about that F sharp? What about this going to that? What about that? Really, all that's doing is G going to F sharp, right? So if G is the third, F sharp is the, say it with me, the second, that's right, Each F sharp is the second. So when we add a second onto a chord, onto a triad, we are doing really what's called a ninth. So this is an E minor over B with an added ninth on top. But it's still an E minor chord. We're just playing around with the E minor, which is really cool. So now is where we go to our first real harmony change. This is just a straight C major seven. There's really nothing interesting about it. The interesting part is we do the same now. We start on the open B, then we do a little harmonic on the 12th fret here. So the chords we're using, we have an E minor, E minor over B uh, with an added ninth, and then going to this C major seven. 
like that, right? From here, we go down to something with an open A. Let's figure out what that is. So it's, we have an open A, then we have the, another A, then we have a C, so A, A, C. It's really feeling like an A minor chord. So that's an A minor seven right there. The G now is acting as the seventh that we were using before. That was the third in the E minor. So now we have this A minor seven that's happening. But the second time we play this, we actually go down to this F, to this B. Like that. So the G is creating a seventh. So it's an A minor seven, but then we go down to the B. What is B in relation to A? That's another second. So we're now moving from the seventh to creating some kind of a ninth. Really, really cool. A. Right, just like that. And then we jump up to this new chord. We're literally keeping everything the same. And then going to this B-ish chord. We don't know if it's a B yet. Is this right B playing up so we have a B up here then we have an A up there then we have a C up there perhaps this is just taking the B from before over here and moving it up to here well down to the B here B well, B dominant B regular just B major chord so let's hear it in context see how that feels that was down here is now moving down an octave to the low note as this now goes up to the F sharp. So we have some cool voice leading happening right there. And that's setting us up for uh, some oblique motion over here to go into this B major, which is the major five giving us a flary harmonic major, uh, excuse me, harmonic minor vibe. So until we go back to this E, minor and then we have our nice little uh what appears to be some type of something i don't know let's make sure that's the right chord d sharp to g is that a g maybe that's not a g maybe it's not a d sharp maybe that's an e flat oh shit so maybe it's an e flat we have g's going on e flat and g works well together I think that's better seen as an E flat with an added ninth because there's no B. Or it could be seen as a B7 with no root or a B with no root, right? But we have the G. So how does the G function, right? What is, what is the G be happening in that sense? That'd be a sus six, sus five, some, some, some add six chord, 13 sort of thing. Could be, could be, I don't know. The E flat, G, uh, and F sharp make a little bit more sense to me, um, but it's no matter what, it's kind of this fun little tone cluster, and it almost doesn't even matter. It's creating this, uh, it's almost like a, almost like a passing chord that we're going through. Right? Whatever it's doing is it is preparing us for the dominant. That's definitely not that. Yeah. Yeah. So we have this E minor. Then this E minor B over set E minor over B with an added ninth. C major seven. Going to this A seven. back to the E minor, then to this sort of E flat, maybe some type of inverted B with a G sort of thing happening. Back to the very quickly moving through it into the B right here, B major, before we do a full repeat and resolve back to the E minor again. So 
In terms of the harmony, it's more straightforward than it appears, but it's still some really fun, interesting stuff that's going on. And that's the cool thing about this part, right? So we are basically in four, but the grouping here, the rhythm is essentially quintuplets. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So it's in this fun little quintuplet thing, but the pulse is very much on the first beat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So more or less, it's one note per measure with the latter part of the measure having either some type of transitionary chord that moves us into the next one. It's preparing us for the motion to the next chord. And it sounds like that, that actually happens quite a bit, which is really good, that is good writing right there. Like I said, I don't have this in my fingers yet. That's fun. That's fun. So if I were to sit down and to really get this, what I would do is I would take out a metronome and I would really start slow to the point where the thumping and the and the right hand motion feels incredibly natural, right? That's going to just take some time. You're just going to have to sit with that. It's a new technique. That's just the way it is. But you can make some very solid progress if you use proper techniques with the metronome. Make sure that you're practicing at a variety of tempos so that you can sort of get your fast twitch and slow twitch mu muscle stuff happening. That's going to help you internalize and let your muscle memory do its thing even faster. All right. So that's the thump and finger pick thing. Uh, yeah, man, it's some cool new stuff happening and it's a cool time to be a guitarist. Cool time to play some metal. All right. Have a good one. Peace out. Oh, and uh, if you want to learn how to master any riff and write like your favorite artists, check out the link down below. Okay, bye.